Okay, so to collect the critters living in the stream, where do you think we're going to look? Well, you know, a lot of people come down and they're looking for crayfish. So you're gonna look under those rocks for the crayfish hiding under there. And crayfish are a, um, an indicator of water quality, but they are not the best indicators. Remember, we talked about the macroinvertebrates, the small uh, insect larvae, nymphs, and other aquatic insects that actually live their whole life in the stream water or in freshwater ponds or rivers. So these macros are actually living uh, there's two ways you can search for them. One is to collect dead leaves, put them in a netting, set them in a stream, anchor them in, wait a couple days, and then go through those leaf packs to see what is collected uh, on the leaves. The other method, which we're going to do here because um, I don't have any fallen leaves collected, nor do I see any in this part of this stream, we're going to do, uh, which I think is a bit more fun, is look under these rocks. So we're going to look under the rocks for critters that are moving and try to identify them. And so bear with me here. I brought my trusty um, paint brush because if you use a paint brush, it is pretty easy to get them off the rocks. So inexpensive tool, make sure it's clean. You haven't used it to paint. And I also have a cup of water because when we catch them, if we want to collect them, you can just look for them. But if you wanted to collect them and do a survey, you would want to put them in a container of water so that they can breathe. All these guys breathe through gills. So I'm picking up rocks that are in the water submerged and looking on them. Now, I can tell you that this that I found on this rock is a rock home of the caddis fly. And I'll put some of my findings in this cup so we can see them a little bit better. The caddis fly larva, the non-net spinning, spinning <laughs> they build uh, kind of glue little pieces of pebbles around themselves to make cases where they that they live in. Now I'm going to make sure I put the rocks back in the water because that was an animal's home. So don't just toss the rocks anywhere. Let's take a look at this one. I'm not used to doing this with a camera in my hand, so bear with me here one-handed. Make sure I can get the shot. I don't see anything on that rock. Uh, I see, oh, do you see that moving? Ah, yes, that. I happen to know is a stonefly. Now, of course, I will show you some identification sheets you can use um, to figure these guys out. Get him in there and then I'll show you. So there is a stonefly moving around. I'm sorry, apologize, a mayfly. It's got three tails in the back. Mayfly nymph. There is also a lot of caddisfly rock or pebble cases on here. If you can see that one there, like the one I picked off. So there were a few things on that rock. Let's try one other place. I think you get the picture with what we're doing here. Let's look if there's anything on here. Two good finds though so far. Actually, three good finds. So, again, I'm just looking on these rocks. You have to be patient. As you might have already been able to see, these things are camouflaged with the rocks. So you have to look for movement immediately. And if you're not seeing it, you know, right away, then you're probably not going to see it. They're really good at camouflage. They don't want to be found because some of these guys eat plants and some of them eat other bugs. So the mayfly is crawling around in there. That has three tails. You might be able to see its gills moving on the side, so it, it, that's how it's breathing. And the caddisfly stone case. So like I said, a lot of these critters, when they hatch out of the water, they fly off as adults and they stay living near the water. So this, you might have seen these guys, is an adult mayfly. It looks a lot like the young, actually. It's still got tails, it just has wings. And honestly, the young mayfly eat uh, plant matter and some animal debris. 
but the adults only live a few hours and they're preyed upon by fish. So they play, you know, all these guys play an important role in the food chain of the aquatic systems, but the mayflies actually, when they hatch out, they only live, like I said, a few hours to mate and then um, they become fish food again. And then the caddis fly I was talking about, the non-net sp spinning, looks similar, looks like this. And they also feed on algae, plant material, and ant material. So as young, you know, these guys are sitting there on the rocks and they're eating whatever's drifting by. Or if it's something like a dragonfly nymph, that is a predator. We often find those in the, in the uh, pond where the water is still. So different macros you'll find in different water systems. Um, some you'll find a lot of in moving water and some you'll find more of in the still water. So now, how can we tell if these are good catches or bad catches? Well, if you were paying attention, I kind of told you <laughs> that we had some good finds. But we do that, um, scientists have put these animals into um, classifications, taxonomy groups. So we've got taxa group one, I'm just showing a few, a few photos, taxa group two, taxa group three. And let's go to a chart that has a bit bigger pictures here. So taxa group one, these animals are pollution sensitive. So if they are dominant, that usually signifies excellent water quality. And they are the stonefly nymph, the mayfly, the caddisfly, Dobson fly, water penny, riffle beetle, those are all larvae, and a certain type of snail called a gilled snail. Did I find any of these today? I keep saying we, but yes, of course I'm looking for this today. It'd be nice if you guys were here to help me. <laughs> we found the, I found the mayfly nymph, right? The three-tailed animal and the caddisfly larvae's home. So these two things we found in class A, so that's good, right? Because they can only live in clean water. Now, if we look at taxa group two, sorry. Taxa group two includes animals like the damselfly nymph, a dragonfly nymph, sow bugs, scuds, they look like little shrimp that swim on their sides, the crane fly larva and the freshwater clams. These animals are moderately pollution intolerant, so they can tolerate a little bit of pollution. If they are dominant, it usually signifies that we have good water quality. So not excellent, but good. And then taxa group three are animals such as the midge larva, the black fly, the flatworm, leeches, and the water mite, and even some worms and different types of snails and ugh, a maggot. <laughs> uh, does this sound like animals living in good water quality? Just the names of them, right? Black fly, larva, leeches, flatworms. No, this is taxa group three, and sometimes they make a fourth group. Um, but taxa group three, they're, they are tolerant of pollution. And some of them, like the worms in this snail, they're saying are very tolerant of pollution. So any of these animals can live in, in water pollution. And if they are dominant in your findings, it'll signify poor water quality. So what do we need to find in a stream? Do we want to find just class one or class two or class three? Well, we want to find a diverse number, a diverse amount of species. Why does it need to be diverse? I mean, in this case, we'd probably want what a mix of taxa one and taxa two, the animals that are a bit sensitive to pollution. But if you're just finding one species, 
Oh, I should mention it was on the other chart, but crayfish are in this taxa group too. If you're finding crayfish, they are uh, a little bit pollution sensitive, okay? But if you're just finding only crayfish, not a good sign of water quality, right? Diversity, it means all different species, just like in other animal species. You don't just want one dominating the landscape. And our landscape as a stream, you want different kinds of macros. That is gonna signify your water quality.